What's up and welcome to yet another episode of the FPV Livestream. I'm Paul Nurkula, aka Nurk FPV. Anybody ready for fire? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of the FPV Livestream. I'm your host, Nurk FPV, and tonight we're going to be building the Super G Dead Cat 7-inch long-range thing from uh, Project 399, Jordan Temkin, uh, you know, the two-time world champion. Temkin uh, has uh, sent me this one out as well as the actual, the original version, uh, but uh, we're going to be building this one. This is the Dead Cat, uh, the extra long, the, the suit, the perfect one for long range, something that he's been flying for a while, something that I'm super excited to build up. Like, I've been, I've had this for like a week now, I've been itching to get it going. So, oh, I forgot... I'm going to bring my phone over here so that I can read the comments as we go, because they're all over there on that computer, and uh, it makes it really hard to, to keep track of what's going on at the same time. Give me one quick second. I'm going to just pull this up. Live chat. There we go. Okay, so I hope that you guys enjoyed that little intro. It's something I've been working on. I don't remember the last time that I, if I used it recently or like uh, all that stuff, so... Uh, I hope that was pretty cool for you. Where are you guys all from? Where are you checking in from? Um, very curious to see where everybody's at. Um, and I would love if you could throw into the uh, chat um, any, like, uh, yeah, anyway. I don't know what I was where I was going. <laughs> the drama, you're building a quad, not going to the moon. You know what? you got to have some fun with it, right? Um, but, uh, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to build some drones. We're going to have some fun. You know, we're going to make it way overly dramatic and that's totally okay because we can do whatever we want it's the internet <laughs> um so for those of you that are joining me for the first time tonight uh this is something that i used to do weekly it's something that i want to start doing weekly again but you know schedules get really tricky for spending four hours uh on a live stream building a quad <clears throat> and uh but you know what? I, I'm going to do my best. Uh, and if you're a returning guest, if there's somebody that's been here before, definitely uh, thank you so much for coming back and checking this out. I love doing it. I love building. I love sharing what little knowledge that I've gained. Um, and then uh, if... What's the last one? Oh, yeah. If you're a vendor, if you're someone that creates something um, that that has something that you want to see featured on this stream, reach out to me. My website has a contact form. You can go there and send something up. Um, I do this. It costs a lot of my time, um, which I'm totally happy to give to you guys and totally give away. Uh, but also consider using like the super chat feature in here if you want to get any information on uh like if i miss a question in the chat because there's a lot of you guys uh use that super chat i'll see it for certain and be able to respond to a question that also supports the stream um i see somebody say that the mic is back should i try to adjust something because it should be coming from this camera here and that camera should be pretty okay um yeah, so let me know what you what you think there. But yeah, so we'll just jump right into this. Um, I, it's going to take a while. I hope that we get this whole thing done tonight. Um, but there's I got there's a lot to do, especially with these super long arms. We've got to run extra wire and all that stuff. So I'm going to take this top plate off here and show you some things about the quad that I think are pretty neat. Mike is good. Okay, cool. Just not the best quality. Okay, that's fine. I don't have uh, a ton of options on that without making it way overly complicated. So I hope you can understand. What Are these not the F80 Pros? I'm using these ones. Yeah, these are the F80 Pros. Sorry, I must have... Uh, not actually said what it was in the description. 
Okay, so we got the top laid off. The first thing that I want you to see about this frame is these bobbins in here. Uh, so these screws here are totally independent of the entire frame. So any vibration, anything that gets to your quad is not going to be uh, induced into the flight controller. So like your whole stack is going to be totally separate from the carbon. Um, and that's accomplished by using these bobbins with the screws. Like they're, they just kind of are totally free against everything. So like once you put the, once you put some basic like mounting hardware and stuff on here, it's totally locked in solid. But I, I love that about this. <laughs> Next thing to notice is that on the frame, you've got, arms that are totally separate from the rest of the quad. So you don't have to take the whole thing apart to swap out an arm if you break it. I think that's going to be more important than the non-Mountain Cruiser version because hopefully you're not crashing this that much. Um, but this is, uh, you know, this you can see that everything is totally separate. Um, another thing to notice is that there's a front and a back where the back has like, it's it's higher or me, or it's not as tall meaning. So like this is where your VTX and your receiver are going to go. And then up here, your camera is going to fit. You can see that like there's actually two different length standoffs. So there's those ones and then those ones are longer, which I thought was a pretty clever little thing. And so that means that Two sets of arms are the same, so you can swap those out at a whim. And then these two sets of arms are the same. And then the middle plates are the, are the same exact shape, uh, but they're just placed differently based on what you need. So I thought that was pretty cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a stack in here. <laughs> I like to use the uh, Hobby Wing... G2 Toi. Um, and again, if you have any questions as we go, feel free to uh, drop them. <clears throat> what is your favorite camera? You're talking about FPV camera? You're talking about action camera? You're talking about digital camera? Because I've got opinions on all of them. So there's our ESC. Our flight controller. This is the Hobby Wing G2 stack. I, I'm guessing that a bunch of people are going to ask me about like, oh, but don't they break sometimes? And my answer is, I've never had a problem with it, so I'm I, I'm not worried. Um, but yeah, literally, you know, four or five hundred batteries, no burning, etc. <clears throat> so for me, I take the stack and put it in first which can be a little bit tricky because the screws like to kind of pop through the bottom like that. So you just got to poke them back through. And then I'm going to put on the little lock screws so that it stays in place. Turn down the mic. Okay, hold on. Okay, I turned the mic down like 10%. You tell me if that's better, too low, etc. So these guys will just screw on here, hopefully. I'm just uh, screwing this on, sorry. Oops, sorry. Perfect, cool. Um, and uh, something that is really helpful with this stream is in order to keep doing it, obviously we need to have people in here. So if anybody would consider sharing the stream and having anybody else that you think would be interested in checking it out, um, definitely consider uh, sharing it to your social so that people can come hang out while we're live. Uh, a lot of people kind of get sad when um, they realize they missed it live because they don't have notifications turned on or whatever. So definitely consider sharing, consider liking, all of the uh, socially kinds of things. I appreciate any opinion you can. Yeah, we got soft mounts on soft mounts on soft mounts. And it's awesome. And like, I'm not even cranking these down that much to, because I don't want it to be super tight. But I'm just getting it enough that it's not going to move at all. 
Jet is running the same frame, but he's also, he's running both the dead cat and the non dead cat versions. He's got both. I've got both too. So here's my normal version. Nice. Um, but I built this one off stream, so I'm just building this one on stream. One second. <clears throat> anyway, um, but yeah, so this this is Jet's frame. Like his comp, he he started Project Three Nine Nine and then designed these frames, and so he is like this. This is all his stuff. So get a pumped. Cool. All right. So I got that in place. I just like to start with that because I don't want those bobbins to fall out. But like you can see that this moves around totally independent of the frame, which is really, really cool. Like I really think that's awesome. All right. So now I'm going to mount the motors up because I like to put motors on because motors are cool. <laughs> Motors are like always my favorite part about building a frame. I gotta find the right length screws here because they all disappeared into the abyss. <laughs> um, but yeah, while I'm trying to figure out the screws and all of that, does anyone have any questions? Feel free again to use that super chat feature. Just donates a couple bucks to this video, but also guarantees that I answer your question. Whatever you need. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and Loctite this while I'm going. Hundred and thirty people. That's amazing. Keep them coming. Come, 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 come. <laughs> Where is my Loctite, though? Battery's done charging. Of course, we're not going to know where our Loctite is. It's like, can I use it? Oh, there it is. Just FYI, just put a little blurb right there in the corner so that I can blurb it. To use hyper smooth for cruisy long range video. Um, I haven't had a chance to really do much cruisy long range stuff since hyper smooth came out. Um, but I do think that it should end up being a tool for that. Um, some people have had hit or miss results with hyper smooth, so I'm excited to do my own testing. Uh. Screws, screws, screws. This is that awkward part of the stream where I just like search through my nuts while everybody watches. Is it too tall? That's too tall. Keep those questions coming. What video edit software do you use for your good videos? Your good, good videos. Uh, I use mostly Adobe Premiere with a little bit of Adobe After Effects. And a lot of mucking about. <laughs> <clears throat> is hyper smooth smooth sim mode no <laughs> why not soft mount motors um so soft mounting motors is silly because you're basically taking away from the motor's ability to impact the frame so like soft mounting motors is it, it 
you want you want the the control to be soft mounted, but you don't want the actual thing that affects performance to be soft mounted because you're basically just you're adding in flex where it doesn't need to be added in. If that makes any sense. Like almost feels like it's cogging. It's weird. Okay, I think that's fine. Whoa. What's the purpose of dead cat? Um, the purpose is to push big, big props back out of the frame of the camera. How many flying quads do you have right now? Uh, one, two, nope, two, three, three, four maybe, if you count a tiny bit. I don't keep a lot flying at the same time, because I can't keep up with the maintenance. <laughs> A little further back so you can see a little bit more of what's going on. Yeah. Does Dead Cat handle worse? No, um, it does handle differently, but it's especially good for like fast forward flight, which is the kinds of flying that this guy is going to be doing. Looking for screws. There's one. Can you explain the motor prop battery choice? Uh, so the motors are T-Motor S80 Pro, um, 1900 kV. The uh, props will probably be Azure 6150 props. And the uh, battery will probably be 5-cell because of the kV being as high as it is. Please move the chip before it dies. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not touching it. Let's see. Cool. Motor's mounted. It's good stuff. <laughs> Cali. Look how long these arms are. It's just crazy. So like with every build I've ever done, I'm going to use race wire because I want the, um, the speed control rails to be, I don't want to have to pop the whole thing apart to access the speed controllers. Who has the 6-inch Azure props in stack? I don't know. I get them straight from Azure. Sorry about those screws. I think some of these I need to like recenter them a little bit. Oop. The uh, tolerance on the 
hole where the motor screw comes through is very low. So if you don't have it exactly center, it's going to affect it. Is that a 7 inch frame? Yes. How big are the props going to be? I'm looking for 6 inch probably most likely, but it will support 7. Um, but I'm mostly interested in flying 6 inch on it. Where? On that three inch ducted fan thing, are you guys considering a five inch version? Uh, not that I'm aware of. And I don't really have any like design input on that. I mean, I give feedback, but it's not like I'm involved in the project really, besides that I fly it and like it a lot. That'd be a better question for Andy. Did you get anything in the RMRC live stream? Yeah, I did. I bought the, uh, the little multi-tools that are the last thing. I thought seriously about the goblin for a second, but decided not to uh, risk my marriage over it. <laughs> Somebody was referring to the Cinewhoop, yes. Whatever happened to the double-sided foam mount for the arms? It's been a year or two ago now. What now? <clears throat> is this a racing quad or freestyle freestyle slash long range why is what is the frame so thin why is the frame so thin uh it's not really that thin and it's also a five mil thickness, so it uh, doesn't need to be quite as wide. Did you see white smoke whenever after you build a quad? Not every time. What are those things that you're putting on the arms? Uh, so these are called race wire. It's just a little PCB that protects from prop strikes and um, uh, 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 um, allows me to be able to extend these wires to the ESC without having to um, muck about as much. What is a goblin? Taylor Haas, thank you so much for the $5 donation. Really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's a blast to do these, and your support is super, super, super helpful. Also, congrats on your live stream for winning this season's DRL. Thank you. I am obviously super proud of that. It was uh, a long, long, long journey, um, but one that I'm extremely glad to have uh, taken the journey of. So now I'm just tinning up the race wire.
Sorry, when I start soldering, I have to focus pretty close. And then I'm going to tin up all of these pads here while I'm at it. Okay, everything's done. Okay, back to the things. Sorry. How long are you going? Uh, this might this will probably be at least three hours. Hey, Nurk, did you see the seven-inch quad kebab belt with 22-12 motors? No, I didn't. Well deserved. Thank you. What defines long range? Um, I would say anything where you don't want to walk for it. <laughs> um, and thank you very much I, I am glad to inspire um, would that set up carry two GoPros it could for sure you won DRL yes you're using 6337 no I use 6040 um, what iron is that it's a TS100 um, only six likes no there's more than that uh, I don't have cable but that awesome untold him he would Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Glad I could finally watch one of these live. I always miss them. Glad you made it. Um, look how fast he's doing it. Lock that shit down to a science. Yes, I've built a lot of these. Have you flown the Brain FC a long time ago? Um, but I killed mine because I didn't uh, realize that it didn't take 5S. So, yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty dumb little moment for me. Didn't, it didn't go up in flames, unfortunately, because right, that would have been more exciting, but it was just like, nah, I'm done working forever. <laughs> and then, again, if you guys need, want any explanation as to what I'm doing anytime, just ask. I will certainly be happy to explain things as they happen. Sometimes I just get caught up in the work that I forget. to talk. Okay. Just toss a zip tie on there to how far you reckon she'd go? Um, honestly, a few miles for sure. Uh, I wouldn't be in this hobby if it wasn't for you, Nurk. Well, I am so pumped to hear you say that. Like that really does fill me with pride. Um, but at the same time, I feel really bad for your wallet. So. <laughs> Um, did you strip three wires at once? Yes, I did. I'm too lazy to do them all individually. It's probably worse in terms of precision, but in terms of making me happy, that's invaluable. Uh, I do not have a race flight quad anymore, or flight one, or whatever. What size of this is, is this quad? It's a seven inch capable, but I'll probably be flying it on six inch mostly because I prefer tuning six inch to tuning seven inch. There we go. Is your video going to be 5.8? Yes. I don't plan on this going 
further than I would need 5.8 to achieve, you know? It's like, further than, like, you know, when you're getting into 1.3 and 2.4 video, you're planning on going, like, you know, friggin' forever. So, this, this will not be going quite that far. Nurk, are the front standoff distance the same as the rear standoff distance? Yes. It's, uh, um, mirrored. Everything is mirrored. Except for the height. Oh, by the way, tell Ockbots I still have his GoPro. Because he left it in London? <laughs> what? Uh, maybe send me a message on my website so we can get that figured out. paulnicola.com slash contact. Why you cut the cables? Uh... Video is the only limiting factor. 5.8 can only go so far. Honestly, I disagree. I think it's going to be battery life is the limiter by far. I see you doing most of this traveling. What city do you fly in the most? Indianapolis. India. USA. Earth. Milky Way. What's our... Yeah, that is our galaxy. Boom! We are on our way. Nurk, do you run your wire motors regular or reverse? Um, almost always reverse. Actually, always reverse. Can't even think of a time when I would run them regular. <laughs> Once again, if you're just joining us, we're building a uh, Project 399 Super G. There is a everything in the description, all of the parts we're using, the frame, a link to it. Um, we got... No, oh, come on. Stick. If you're uh, a newcomer, a first-timer, um, thank you for joining. If you're returning, thank you. Glad to have you. We gotta make this wire longer. And again, if I'm missing your chats, I'm sorry. I'm trying to make progress here and talk to you guys at the same time is not always the easiest. But once again, if you do that super chat thing, I will definitely see it. <laughs> Nurk, who's your favorite pilot? Um, depends on what context. All right, cover your ears. Just giving you a heads up right now. Is that seven inch mate? Yes, this will fit seven inch. I, I warned you. 
I've been two miles on 200 milliwatts, 5.8, no problem. Like actual two miles. Who's your favorite freestyle pilot? Um, so I think that if it's if we're just talking like hardcore, just raw freestyle, no nothing else, um, you know, not trying to like chase something or do anything, I would say it's uh, Willie, Wild Willie. I'm super inspired by him. Like as, when I see him do stuff, I'm like, I, I don't think I could ever do that. Um, I also really like uh, Red FPV. Um, I think he's uh, French, makes some pretty awesome stuff, some very unique stuff. Um, I like Air Blaster. Um, those are those are three of my top favorites right now. Like I will go, dro I'll drop what I'm doing to go watch them if they put out a new video. How about we'll put it that way. Okay, now for these wires, I'm going to run them underneath the flight controller like this. And just try to get them all sequential here. <clears throat> get everything nice and tight. And then we can strip ten and attach. And I'm just gonna do these in any if any way so that because I can always go back and uh, change the motor direction later. Who's the best editor? Uh, Air Blaster <laughs> or Stickman? Actually, Stickman, but then Air Blaster. How hot! Dang it. <laughs> Why am I failing so bad at that? Biggest speed of drone in your recon. I don't know what that means. What about Maddie's stunts? I like Maddie, but I like Willie's. I, the way I look at Willie is like, I will never be able to do what he does. And that's what is most impressive to me. Like, if I practiced really hard, I think I could do what Maddie does. But Willie just has such a unique style and a way of flying, like, that I just, I look at it, I'm like, I don't think that I could ever do that. And that's what's most impressive to me. I just put my arm in dual lock or Loctite. See that blue? Yeah, there you go. It's also on this one too somehow. <clears throat> so I just got a message from Oh my God. That's funny. <laughs> Wish I had my drone build. I'm watching Shrek with my kids. Nice. <clears throat> what are some good podcasts you're listening to lately? Uh, the podcast that I listen to most is actually not an FPV related one. It's called... Uh, my brother, my brother, and me. Has anybody else listened to that before? It's absolutely hilarious, and I can't stop. Like I, it's I, all I listen to in the car now. Um, and uh, I love love me some of those good good boys. 
And then uh, for FPV, I always listen to the FPV show. I've been really digging the uh, Fly Life Co. podcast, which is super chill. Um, that's a good time. And then I'm also listening to an audiobook that I've got to look the name up of really quick. Yes, Tommy. Oh, my God. We've been talking about... I've been building an Acrobrat, one of his frames, and I we've been talking a couple days here and there. Maybe he'll jump on. That'd be cool. There we go. One motor fully wired up. <laughs> uh, let me look up that book name really quick. I gotta pull my phone here. Um, no, Audible. Audible, 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 Audible. I feel like I should be doing like an Audible ad read right now. <laughs> One of the books that I've been listening to is uh, Extreme Ownership by uh, Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. It is a, it's written by two ex-Navy SEALs about um, motivation and how it, how to control your brain and make yourself work harder and faster and stronger um I, I heard about them from the uh from casey neistat they were jocko was a uh guest on his uh channel and they you know pimped his book and stuff and it's been really good so far <clears throat> what type of music are you into um i listen to the kind of music that you hear in my videos um and I don't know if that's because I was into it first or not, um, but it, I definitely have steered into what is in my videos in most of my listening. So, like, if you want to go check that out, you'll hear the kind of music I'm into. Do you ever listen to music while you fly? Um, almost never, actually, unless it's just, like, playing in the background, like somebody's got their, you know, music out um, but for the most part Dane I I'll then if you use the super chat for five bucks I'll give you a shout out <laughs> I'm having trouble fitting this wire for some reason I was literally just listening to Extreme Ownership. There you go. I like that it's read by the authors. I think that's always really cool. Um, like, uh, a lot of comedians do that. Like, I listened to uh, Nick Offerman's book um, and Tina Fey's book. And it's really, I really, really like that they, like, read their own stuff. And then they can, you know, put it in the voice that they wrote it in, which I think is really, really unique. put my arm right in that Loctite again. Should have thought through where I put it. Is Nurk using the long axie? Uh, no, I'm not, but I, won't. I need to get some. 
Um, I saw Provo using them, and I've been eyeballing it ever since. Good evening, Nurk. How goes it, bud? That frame looks cool. Dude, it goes great. Honestly, it's, uh, I've had a journey, and I'm excited. And I'm pumped to be here. I love FPV. Love you guys. That's what it's all about. What is a recommended solder station for low budget? Uh, TS-100. If you don't have a soldering station, just get a TS-100 in a little stand. That's the by far the best. How much do you reckon the GoPro HD cam affects the FPV signal quality? Zero. What up, Nurk? What up, Drake? In terms of blockage, none. I got some long fox here pedogas. Sorry, pagodas. <laughs> but may go to the long axis. Seems pagodas have a bigger null. That's probably true. <clears throat> cool. All right, two out of four. I bet. Oh my God, is still messaging you? No, he just sent one. Doink. Okay. All right, more wire. It's too skinny. Just got so many old motor wires in here. There's three. I need three more. Not old, just unused. Extra lengths. Some of these are just like, oh, whoa. There's a clear view antenna. Or clear view? No. What is that thing called? The digital one. Connex. Does anyone have experience with the Runcam 3S? Yes. I do have experience with it. Can't we get higher gain omni receiver antennas with a flatter donut shape? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about antennas. I just listen to the hype. Clean as 
balls. Is this a seven inch? Yes. What do you use to power the VS TS100? Currently, I'm just using a 6S battery. Um, but you can buy like a 19 volt wall wart and just use that. Just have to put a different plug on it. I think actually my TS100 came with a wall wart, if I remember correctly. Oh, come on. How did I mess that up? All right. Slow down. Take your time. There we go. Okay. Dude, there's nothing better than a good patch antenna. Yes. In theory, wouldn't a short antenna have better reception because of less coax loss? Uh, not if a shorter antenna is like hiding the antenna below your the carbon on your frame or something like that. It's just, it's a balancing act, right? It's the more coax, the worse the performance is going to be. You're absolutely right. But if the antenna is so short that it, you know, uh, is just hiding behind carbon the whole time you're in the air, then it's not very useful to you. Then anyway. So the you have to do that that math of what's going to work best for your situation. I hope that's long enough. too concentrated. There we go. Okay. What does the DRL FPD feed look like? Is it 5.8? Uh, it's not 5.8, but it looks like analog does. So it looks pretty much the same as you would see just with no multipathing. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, hit that there super chat and ask the questions away. I am more than happy to uh, answer questions about DRL or this this season, what's going on, what's next, DRL sim tryouts, um, NERC stuff, NERC life stuff, whatever. I am here for you guys. Ugh. 
Does that frame come in a 5 inch? Not with the dead cap version, but with the, uh, the standard version. What is the DRL video? I all I'm allowed to say is that it's not 5.8. I think. Hopefully, I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> yeah, you're here first, boys. Need Nerk swag. There's Nerk swag on my website, paulnerkola.com. I think there's a link to it in the description. Congrats on DL Nerk, thank you. Are you not running a full size camera in this build? No, I'm not. Looks dope, thank you. It would be like 7.5 miles. Do you use capacitors? Yes, that's next step. Uh, an odd and non FPV related one. How tall are you? I'm three, six foot three. Uh, is it better to use three or two bladed propellers? Depends on your what you're doing. Um, thanks MC, something is wrong with my gear then. Have you seen the team motor F a thousands? I've seen them, I've not seen them in person. No, no, that's not true, I've seen them in person. Uh, will the information or product he released? What? Is that a Speedex CSC or Acon? Neither, it's Hobbywing. Um, what is your ground station set up these days? Goggles. <laughs> uh, any thoughts? Uh, if Strix, Hoot, and TVS Triumph are similar antennas. Uh, I've had good luck with both. You having kids soon? Hopefully not. <laughs> what KV is he running? 1900 KV. 36 tight connections done. Well done, Paul. I'll try to drop back by later. See ya. Have you ever built your own frame at home? If so, what do you use? No. Um, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to get another beer. I'll be, right, I'll be right back. Just bear with me. Okay. Almost always left hand. <clears throat> okay, so we've got four motors wired up. Nothing geed. Let's get a capacitor on there. I think it's going to be that one. So I've got this bad habit of like putting capacitors on backwards, even though I know how to do it right, and I it's like obviously know which side is which. Somehow, I quite often manage to plug it in backwards, which is hilarious to me. Those arms look like they are gonna resonate from hell. You know, I have no idea.
Oh, hey, Spank FPV with 10, is that euros or pounds? I don't know. <laughs> I want to support you as you're one of my biggest idols in the FPV world. Thank you so much. Would you support me a little too with a shout out? Everybody go check out uh, Spank FPV. Um, started FPV like a year ago because of the flight of the year. That's awesome. That frame looks awesome. Where did you get it? Uh, it's in the description. It's from project399.com. Um, Nurk, will the DRL video info be released or a product? Uh, I don't think so. 69 degree camera angle all day, every day. Exactly when you're flying and go over someone's house with your Wi-Fi feed goes to hell. Yeah, I guess. Paul, any idea when that frame is coming? Oh, gosh. That's you. Um, oh, frick. No, I don't have any idea. <laughs> Another flight of the year. That's awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. <sighs> Let's see. So I want to put a little double-sided sticky sticky underneath that so that it doesn't accidentally short out or anything. Are you still flying on the Futaba 14? Um, well, I don't have a for Futaba 14. I have a Futaba 18, and yeah. All, for, for all racing, I run the Futaba. Alright, bump that back down in there. And then get a little zip tie action. Just keep this down in place so it's not tempted to go anywhere. Boink. Cool. Looking hot. Twite. They made dedicated holes for the cap. Whoops. <laughs> Stickman edits make me want to ditch my laptop and freeware editing system. Yeah, I totally get that. He, he, he uses some expensive stuff, let me tell you. I was talking to him about it one day. I just realized that, oh, yeah, this is like cinema grade editing tools and stuff. Like, that's not what makes him amazing. It's because he's a genius. But <laughs> he's, he's out, he's out price ranged for uh, the majority of uh, FPV enthusiasts. Put a little LED on here while I got this open. I'm going to put it right down here so that it is nice and protected. This is a tiny tie special. Positive is outside. Need some Need some wire. I need some wire here. This is a green sled. Hi, can you make it blue? No. I only go green. Oh, come on. And you think it's cool, but it's not. Okay, I'm gonna run these back up into the frame. 
like so. And the sky will be plenty bright for this whole machine, <laughs> which is awesome to me. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. Now we're going to do LEDs reduce flight time, not by a noticeable amount. Do you always fly with your FAA numbers on your quads? Of course. Uh, these are the 5S versions, but he says that it will. You just got stream pumped by Bot Grinder. Nice. Who said that uh, we were streaming right now? That's funny. Bomb him back. Is that the is that the protocol? How many people are watching him right now? Let's look. Oh, we do have beers with bots going on. <laughs> it looks awesome. That's why tonight's goal up there yeah, is set to all right. 59 99 for Pokemon. If you enjoy watching me get drunk on the TV, throw a dollar over here and I'll play Pokemon. All right. So do you want to do the giveaway? How are we going to do the giveaway? How are we going to do the giveaway? No, what go, are you giving away? Go, go see. Oh, is there a secret prize? For a bit. No, it's that prize that I told Dang, you. He's got 101 people watching. Last one of. That's awesome. Oh, the Choo Choo Bells? Yeah. Oh, the Choo Choo Bells? Yeah. Okay, let me here I'll do a whole thing. Hang on, let me go to this other screen. Hey, do you well, have a pair have of OG hype so. train motors? Pretty cool. They still have them because they came out like two years ago. Well, were you really jealous when you didn't get a set of the choo choo motherfucker bells? Yeah, boy Mike Chin's got you covered. He's giving away the last egg old gravy. He's giving away the last fucking set of choo-choo motherfucker hype train bells. I have a set. I've never put them on anything because I want them to stay clean and shit. But if I you want to win yourself a set, we're giving them away tonight, courtesy of Mike Chan. Dang. Who's over there, like, donating, like, 40 bucks? Dang. I'm jealous. <laughs> it's awesome. Mm. All right. Uh, gonna go ahead and keep working on this. Hopefully, you guys will come back eventually. Uh, this is a seven inch quad. How many beers does Bot Grinder drink on an episode of Beers with Bot Grinder? Or I guess maybe how much marijuana's does he smoke? <laughs> are you watching? Are we now watching a live stream? Someone watching a live stream? Uh, we were for a second. My bad. Dude, welcome to the freaking 21st century. I need a... 
my the tip on this iron is not quite big enough to really do a great job with this thing. And for the positive, give me just a second. Yes, yeah, so I plan to top mount, uh, but you can actually do both on this frame. There we go. All right, so the XC60 basically will come out and then wrap itself in the, the battery lead right here to keep it out of the frame of the props. That's how I do it on my other one. Um, can you wave to the camera? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> cool. What antenna do you use on your fat shocks? Uh, what antenna do I use? Um, I use a TrueRC X squared Air and a TBS uh, Triumph, like this. This I love this antenna so much. <clears throat> Your shirt is dope, bro. Thank you. I think so too. I love me some Detroit multi rotor. Okay. Now what? <laughs> this will go flight controller since we've got everything done on that end. Got that bad boy on there. Get us some screws. What stack are you using? Uh, everything is in the description. Uh, this is the uh, Hobbywing G2 stack. Okay, now we need our cable to connect it. It is this, this one here. It goes into the speed controller at the bottom. And wraps up to flight controller on top. Oh, it's so pretty. I love that little ribbon, little ribbon cable. <clears throat> Were all the components provided by your sponsors? Uh, no. Um, I buy the receivers and VTX and motors and 
I guess the, the frame was a donation to the channel, I guess. Project 399 does not show this quad. I don't think that this particular version is quite out yet. Actually, here, let's call Jordan. Let's see if we can get Jordan on. Call Jordan Temkin. Hello. Call Jordan Temkin. Yeah. He's watching movies, man? Nah. We're sorry. Uh, the circuits are busy now. What? Please try your call again later. <laughs> Never mind. He blocked me. No, I don't know. Oh, I just heard myself whistle. That's weird. Okay, get rid of that. All right, I'm going to put my camera in here before I forget about it. I'm going to use uh, the I'm going to use the Run Cam Eraser. It's a new, newish. Basically replaces the Sparrow, even though the Sparrow is only out for like a month. Trooper Miles said, "What's up, bud?" I say, "What's up?" Bud, bud. What's up? We're back to you. Oops, I'll put these on the other way. Uh, eh. Oh, that can't be right. I've heard that the X rotor is unreliable. I personally have not had that experience. It's been great for me. No explosions, no fires, no dead voltage regulators or anything. So right now I'm just mounting up the camera. Don't need the spacer. No, oh, I've got it upside down too. That would have been bad. I love how small this camera looks relative to the frame right now. That kind of cracks me up, actually. A booyah! Hi, Nerd. Big fan of your channel. Thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome. Excuse me while I stroke these wires into submission. Wait, what? Who said that? Actually, I'm going to take off these. Uh, I want to be able to get underneath the flight controller for the next few minutes. Greetings from the UK, dude. Should you be asleep right now? <laughs> Why do you choose that camera over something like the new Falcor cam? Well, uh, I think this is a direct competitor to it, and I'm also a run cam pilot, <laughs> so I wouldn't use a Fox here in the first place. Just being honest. All right, there's a 10 volt back here that I'm going to use for the camera as well as the ground. 
Tin up these wires. That will help ensure a noise free video as well as actual power for the camera, which is good. Okay, got that. And then the blue one is supposed to go straight to a VBAT. So I'm going to go around straight back. So we'll just pop that off. That's where I left it off. Oh, there we go. Mr. Jordan Temkin. Hello. Hey, you're live. Oh, hello, you and everybody else that may be listening. <laughs> What's up? Not much. Yeah. Uh, I am in California. The California Clash. Uh, at the NorCal v SoCal race. We just showed up at the spot. Nice. How yeah. is it looking there? Yeah. How's the uh, build coming? Pretty good. We uh, just got the the motors are all done. Speed controller is done. And now we're. I just finished wiring up the camera. Or just about to finish wiring up the camera. And... Uh, yeah, we're just making slow and steady what, progress. What's that up? Uh, we've got the T Motor F80 1900 KV. Um, he just hung up on me. <laughs> Hopefully, he'll come back. <laughs> That's funny. RX TX. Let's see, do I have enough? Got RX three, six, and one. So I'll just use the camera on one for camera controls. So bringing this around. So green on the camera is RX, so that goes to the TX. And then the RX on the camera goes to TX on the board. And that should give us full camera control through the flight controller, which is pretty neat. a lot of little wires from the camera. It's crazy. Okay. 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 So now we're going to do the video line. Now, this is my one complaint about the G2 stack is that you have to bridge wires to use the OSD. So you have to like I have to take this, and this is the in wire for the camera. So now I've got to bridge, like, just connect these two like this, which is just blah. And I have complained to them about this decision because I would much rather just solder this straight to a pad, but. Someone decided that this is the way it goes. Pacific Northwest with the $5 donation twice, maybe? If you didn't want to do that, I can refund you that. Sorry about that. Um, 
Dude, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I love the Pacific Northwest. Holy cow. I uh, got to go up there for to San Francisco and fly around the coast. And it was just some of the best flying that I've ever had. Thank you so much for the donation. I really appreciate that. Um, and everybody should definitely go check out Pacific Northwest channel. Maybe he's got some videos flying around the beautiful Pacific Northwest. I don't know because I haven't had a chance to look, but I will be later. All right. This is a, an ear warning. Five, four, three, two, one. Slip that guy in there underneath the stack. So that's how you have to do the video, which again I think is just silly. Silly, silly, silly. Alright, and then so this one is video out, which is gonna go to the VTX. And then there's a 10 volt, and then there's a ground, and then there's an R6, and then this one is T6. And T6 is what I need for the VTX. Uh for smart audio and then oh here's Jordan again let's try this again welcome back I'm back <laughs> uh, we, I have terrible cell signal out here I gotcha no worries but right, so uh, the bill? Uh, okay so we've got T-Motor F80s and if you guys okay. let me know if you can hear Jordan all right everybody uh, this is Jordan Temkin, Jet. He made this frame, his project, uh, project399.com. Um, it's all in the, the description below to go check it out. I think it's all out of stock, but maybe it will be back soon, Jordan? Uh, I have... It's building right now. I got 30 of them. Uh, I'll put them in stock when I get home uh, early next week. And then I have a big order of the 5-inch coming in, hopefully in two weeks' time. Cool. So 30 of the dead cat, which is what we're working on, and then a bunch more of the 5-inch one, which I showed earlier. Um, that's going to be sometime later. But the dead cat will be, like, if they check on Wednesday, it'll for sure be up. Hello. Uh, you you cut out for anything you just said. Uh, sorry, it's uh, it's the same body. They're just different arms. Yeah. So they're swappable. So you, if you buy a dead cat now, you can swap it to five and a half if you want later, and vice versa. Hey, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought about it like that. So you can just switch it back and forth if you decide you don't like one or the other or want to try something new. You just need uh, that was, what thirty bucks like, of arms. Uh, I was up in the mountains. And I had seven inch props, but it got a little windy, so I just threw like five inch props on my seven inch dead cat, and it was buttery foot, smooth footage. Really? Yeah, well, because you have that larger lever, it's, you know, it's more stable just because it's bigger. Yep. Yeah. So I, I, I know all well. about that problem, Jordan. What? Did I say that a lot? Huh? <laughs> uh, you yeah, talk. Tell us about the, the design considerations and all your thoughts and why you made this. And Yeah. Yeah, so the goal with these frames was I wasn't really satisfied with the no props in view HD filming quads, um, especially low camera tilt. A lot of them would be like, no props in view, but you have to be running 40 degree camera tilt. You know, that wasn't acceptable. Um, especially when we're following things, it's, you generally want like 10 or 20 degrees when you're like following a mountain biker or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wanted something that could do low camera tilt, no props in view at super view. Um, and I, I wanted like a bus kind of quad like that so I could put larger 2200 milliamp batteries on it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, for long range stuff. Yeah, so what's your setup so, usually? What's that? So what's your setup? Uh, my setup is normally like Hobby Wing G2 stack. Uh, all my freestyle rigs actually have that 2306 1600 KB uh, Hobby Wing motor on it. And they're just super smooth. Even, the, even the big guys, or you want something bigger for the big guy? Uh, no, same ones on my 7 inch actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Um, yeah, and I think the key is the arms are 6 millimeter carbon. So it's a super, super rigid. Like, if you take even that dead cat and, like, hold opposite arms, it doesn't flex. Like, there's no, you know, it doesn't flex at all. Um, and I'm, that I'm demonstrating that right now. <laughs> um, because even, like, the 5 mil frames, a lot of them have just this little bit of flex in them. Yep. Um, and I think that rigidity is especially key as you go up in prop size. Um, and then the, the vibration isolation garments for the bike controller makes it not just only like easy to build, but it also helps with just all those weird little vibrations that you get from bigger props. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that dead cat, it's a little weird. You'll notice that when you have a GoPro on the front, you actually have to like run the battery hanging halfway out the butt. So like half of the battery is strapped down to where the straps are, and the other half of the battery is kind of like hanging in the air oh on my. the back. Um, and that's what you have to do to get proper CG and balance. Um, and having proper CG and balance, especially on the dead cat is really, really, really important. Yes. So, just, it's, the CG is kind of like, it's like where the bolts are on the back arm. That's where the CG of the frame is. Okay. Yeah, that makes so sense. Just keep, just keep that in mind uh, when you're putting a battery on that you want to have it like half the battery hanging off the butt. It's kind of weird. Um, but it works. And it makes it fly a lot better. Yeah. Because if you, if you put the battery on just like where it's normally supposed to go for the 5 inch quad, it, it'll, it'll just fly real strange. And when you yaw, it'll kind of wake out. Um, sort of like if you remember the Racer 2 used to wake out if you yaw too hard. It, has, it does the same kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that's also very dependent on the motors. So, like my buddy Benson's running the FX Moon Boot, like 20. 507 or whatever they are um and that has less of that problem just because the motors have more torque to compensate so it's also dependent on your setup gotcha awesome yeah. um then what uh what's your prop and battery of choice for this uh so that depends. Um, I got a 25 plug out of a 4,000 milliamp 5S Nanotech, Nanopuff, you know, just the junky 5S 4,000. Um, and that actually, I was able to top mount it. And, I, and it, it's not like hovering. I like cruised up and down a mountain 10 times um, for 23 minutes. 23 minutes. Yes, and, and like Benson, he's put on like a 6,200 milliamp for us or something, and he, he's, you know, getting up to 30 minutes. 6,200? Uh, yeah, for us. That's massive. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's like a misconception that a lot of people think with, uh, with long range is that they're like carrying too heavy of a battery, and the disc then like you're not. You can fucking throw a giant battery out there and you just fly with amps. Um, you focus on what is the most efficient watt per kilometer, pretty much. Um, and you cruise at whatever that amp, amp draw is. And you can make a battery last forever. Um, and that's with the HQ 7 inch. It's the 7 by 3.5 by 3 tripod props. Um, so you run tri-blade 7-inch? 
Yes, tabloid seven inch, um, spinning nice and slow. Um, I think my quad pulls like twelve amps at a at a upwards cruise up a mountain. Twelve. Amps. You don't have any okay. of that in your area. Yeah. But I'm sure you, I'm sure you'll find a way to test it. My yeah, my my soy fields here will definitely consume less than twelve amps. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, pull and and then it, and he underslings it. Um, it's really easy to undersling on that quad because there's that big gap, right, where the garments are. Yeah. Um, so you just throw a strap under there, uh, throw a strap behind, like on the back of the frame. That's probably where I put my VTX. Yeah. Um, I've been meaning to 3D print like a spacer so that the battery's not like getting angled. Oh, okay. Um, that's in the works for people who want to fly 6200 milliamp 5s uh, or 6s <laughs> or whatever. AKA uh, just for Benson. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, but I mean, it's designed to be a long range frame. That doesn't have problems. It's like you can still get seven inch props. You can fly for 25 minutes. And even at like zero degree camera tilt, you will not have props in view. Um, and that's that's like. Kind of the goals with Project 399 for me is, you know, um, building frames for the goal of filming uh, in a straight line ish. Filming in a straight right. line ish. Well, it's like, you know, it's, it's these frames aren't specifically built to be like flippy flopping and rando bandos or whatever these guys say. Yeah. Um, it's it's to film and chase footage and mounting crews. Um, as you found out, the five inch still flies really fucking well as just a normal freestyle quad. Yes. Um, because it, 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 it is uh, it's it's there's nothing special about them. They're normal freestyle quads. Yep. Um, but uh, you know, I, I've taken the time to like find a guy who makes carbon that I like and just like feels good in your hand. That was a really key part for me. Yeah. And it does feel um, awesome. Like it's just this amazing matte finish. Like it's, oh, yeah, it's and beautiful. Like the corners, he, he fans the edges actually. So you can feel it's not like very sharp. It's, it's very soft on the corners. Yeah. Um, so that's like a, a big part for me was like, I can't chase to the bottom and sell this frame for thirty dollars because it costs me more than that actually uh, to produce it. Yes. So how do I make it worth the customer's while? Um, and that's by making it, uh, you know, worth the quality. Um, so it, it, the frames aren't cheap, uh, especially the dead cat. The dead cat, the arms themselves cost as much as the entire five-inch kit. Um, oh the, wow! The arms really. It's like thirty-five dollars cost to me just for the arms. Um, so it, it, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be very careful not to break these. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're, it's. I mean, it's six mil carbon. It's a big ass arm. Um, so I think that frame is going to end up costing ninety dollars. Oh. Um, but that's. Well, it's a premium you know, frame. Like it's not. That's not. Yeah. A, that's not egregious. It's not I mean, like it's, it's, not, it's not $130. The Stinger Swarm Forge Carbon. Yeah. No, no. no. I mean, I'm, I'm still being reasonable. Like, yeah. my philosophy is uh, whatever the cost is, plus $20 for me, plus $20 for the retailer who sells it. Um, everyone's got to make a little money to make it worth the time. So I add $40 to the cost of whatever to, to meet my margin. Um, so it's. It's, it's roughly like my my philosophy behind the amount of money I make from those is like if I'm going to sell a frame and get it produced and pack it like it's me and my girlfriend counting all those like it's the sweatshop in Seattle right in my one bedroom apartment like for me to have it be worthwhile to do that I gotta make 20 bucks a frame um, and then for the retailer to sell it, 
they have to make some money too, obviously. Yeah. Um, so they can make 20 bucks. And that's like my philosophy is like, we just make 20 bucks, everybody's happy. You get a frame that costs whatever cost plus 40 bucks is. Um, and if yeah. you don't like yeah. that, yeah. Like, I mean, you, it's, cheaper frame. you get the There's opportunity to get frames out there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but, if you want a cheap frame, the TBS source is a really good call. There's plenty of other, like, cheaper frames that you can go get. Um, if you want something that I've thought through um, and that I have personally, like, counted each screw for, um, and I do miscount. So, <laughs> if I give you the wrong amount, my bad. <laughs> Just email me. I don't know. Get you some more that's screws. The whole, yeah, that's the whole philosophy. And then, uh, one criticism we had was that the frame they come with a GoPro mount uh, that is not happening. Uh, that, yeah, as in, GoPro mounts are included yeah. uh, in the next batch. No, that that information hasn't come out anywhere except uh, what you said. Okay. So, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, GoPro mounts were not included in batch number one, um, but that was because I didn't have the designs quite figured out yet. Uh, but from the next batches, they'll they'll all have GoPro mounts included. Um, and I think I might do a thing where it's like you can opt out of the GoPro mount and save five bucks sure. kind of thing. Because um, that makes sense to me. Like a bunch of people have these printers. They don't need someone to print something for them. So, <laughs> But then there's people like me that... The GoPro mount, I'll just like remove the cost of whatever. How, I think the GoPro mount cost me six bucks. So. Yeah. And the, well, and then the, the, the other people like me that are that refuse to ever get a 3D printer and will right. then you can just pay six bucks and suck exactly. It up. <laughs> and I like, love it. Yeah, six bucks is that's a that's a pretty reasonable amount. I think I paid twenty for a. Like, I'm not one hundred percent sure how much I actually. Yeah, yeah. I have a spreadsheet for that, but plus or minus yeah, roughly, six dollars. Yeah, like I and if anyone gets but hurt about uh, cost. I can give you my spreadsheet. Um, so, you know, because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about how much it does actually cost to produce a frame. Um, yeah. Some people think it's really expensive and some people think it's really cheap. Um, and it's a combination of both of those thoughts. And you and I had that conversation at one point about, like, just just flat out transparency. Like, you know, this is what it is. This is what it's about. Do you, do you want to hit on any of those points? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's what I'm following, the philosophy that I'm following. It's just, like, it. I'm doing it to be worth my while, and I'm not going to do it if it's not worth my while. So that's, you know. And and uh, for anyone else who's listening, uh, Travis McIntyre of Moke is the one who actually does the 3D modeling for me. Um, I just tell him ideas of what I want and then he actually makes the magic happen. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't realize that Travis did the... Like yeah, the, no, the he's the one that actually like, did the real modeling with all that. Um, I gave him... I like modeled it myself, um, but it, it looked like shit and it looked like a two-year-old drew it with crayons. Um, <laughs> so I pretty much like sent a bunch of screenshots to him, like napkin drawings, and I was like, hey, you actually make this stuff suck. Um, and then that's what you're holding in your hand. That is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it worked out. That's awesome. Cool. Let me uh, pour through the comments here. Um, somebody's Night Train FPV says, "Epic info. Thanks for your time." Um, he also says that uh, the carbon is hand finished, just like I do with all my frames, so it saves me time. Um, License to Drive says, which came first, the dead cat, the design of the frame, or the dead cat quadcopter? Uh, dead cat quadcopter is the OG, man. Yeah, that's, that's pretty old school. Oh, TBS, uh, Discovery, and I'm sure before even. Night Train also likes the VTX antenna mount, which is super simple. I was I was working on that while you were talking. It's getting that all set up. Yeah, yeah, that's that. You just like throw a screw through it and put the TBS mount on the other side. Um, 
it only works with that TPSL, like GSMA though. But that's that's what you should be using anyway. He does raise a question that I actually wanted to ask you at some point, um, which is that okay. does he have any issue with it moving? So like when the antenna's sticking out the back, um, I, I personally actually have had it like rotate a little bit on me once in a while. Yeah, I've had that happen in a crash. I've never ever had it happen. Okay, so you just you don't care if something moves around in a crash, as far as you're concerned. No, it's I, a... no, no. If I crashed and something moved, that it probably saved the antenna, right? That's the way I see it. It's yep. Like if the antenna is immovable, then that's going to break. Something has to give. There has to be some sort of crumple zone. Um, and a little bit of thing spinning and you just like flicking it back with a thing is, I think, better than a broken antenna. Yes. My like so my only fear with that would be that it would like spin into a prop line or something like say I turtle mode it out of something. Um, but right. that's just part of the math of. Uh, right. Um. Uh, Kevin. Uh, uh. Evan Turner's dad. Yes. He just designed a file that is virtually the same thing, but goes over post standoff. Um, oh. Okay. So, oh, for this frame, too, because Evan has some, doesn't he? Yes, yes. Um, so that's like something I've been seeing. Uh, anyone who's asked me for... Uh -oh. Like, if someone wants to fucking clone my frame, they can clone it. It's not that hard. <laughs> um, so if anyone wants to, like, design some stuff for it or whatever, like, I'll send you the files for the frame so it's easier for you to design stuff around it. Yeah. Oh. Um, Cool. I, I just request that they allow it to be available. Open source. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much open source. Like, it's not open source in the sense that like everything's available and I want people to cut it, but like, I... No, no, the, the, I, their designs. The designs that they make. Right. That right. you want them um, to be available. I mean, and it doesn't have to be. Like, I'm, I'm working with, like, Frank 3D. Um, and he designed a bunch of files, and like I'm not making him make his files public because that's like his fucking business. Yes. Um, I'm obviously being reasonable about that, but yeah, I mean, like I want people to design mods and you know help with the evolution of the frame. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the, I'm also working on a larger 10 inch uh, frame. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I'm still deciding if I want it to just be like another arm upgrade or if it's a different quad. Okay. Um, but we. Would there be tubes or flat? It's actually like really cool looking. I'm still deciding on if I want to like shell out the cash for 10 mil plates or if I should actually go away from plates and start using tubes or, you know. I, just, I um, personally, I wonder about the, the flex at that point. Right, but what if it's 10 mil? Or 15 mil. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? Like, well, then it, going uh, up, like, yeah. we'd be surprised. I have, like, some prototypes uh, where the arms are 5 mil and one that's, like, the 6 mil that I'm selling. Yeah. And even the difference of the 5 mil, like, I can flex the 5 mil slightly, ever so slightly, right? Yeah. Um, but the 6 mil does not fucking move a goddamn millimeter. Really? Um, yeah. So it's. There's definitely like a point at which the carbon is rigid enough. Um, yeah, I can't imagine how that, like the the seven inch version here already looks. I mean, crazy oh, just geez. the length of the arms. Yeah. I can't imagine how yeah. like three more inches per arm, six more inches of diameter right. essentially. Uh, they're wider. They're wider. Okay. Um, and the, they actually use the standoff as part of the full pattern, so it's like three. So it's not just that thinky little thing okay. you're holding it in. Um, but it's, yeah, it's going to be really big. I got some Brother Hobby T5 3115 motors. 3115. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're honking heavy ass things. I actually mounted them on that dead cat because they're 19 by 19 racing. Oh, really? Okay. Pattern. It looks ridiculous. Like, it's not. It needs a big quad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's the, that's what I want to push towards. Cause I, you know, I think that big quads are going to come before everyone was flying. Like, 
three to five hundred size quads. Like that was normal. Like a ten or twelve inch quad. That was like whatever. To a degree, I'd still I would say that's still normal because I mean DJIs are still seven right. to twelve right. range. So I think I think we're kind of like rotating back to that um, as we get back into we just like need more like load capacity, right? Like if we want to fly something bigger than a GoPro, we need to be able to carry it. But I want to still maintain that maneuverability um, to some degree. Yeah. I mean, as much as possible. So, yeah, I mean, there's this plan, uh, but I have to build up and obviously it to do that kind of testing. So that, that's like why I started at the 5-inch, because it's like, it works, it's easy, I can sell it, um, hopefully make a bit of money to then reinvest into building larger and larger quads for everybody to play with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cool. You know, just just having fun, making. That's what it's all about, right? Uh, oh well. Anyways, I should probably help these guys build this track. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I'm just double checking on comments here. Um, Jet, you rock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you rock too. Let's. Test as you yeah, go yeah, help okay. support the testing. Great thinking is what he says. So yeah. Well, thanks for uh, jumping on a quick call. Appreciate that. Yeah. Next time we'll uh, have to get your face on because it's yeah. and the 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 phone does not do your 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 deep beautiful luscious voice uh, justice. So. <laughs> That's my favorite part about the Solomon videos was people commenting how beautiful your voice was. Nothing about this. Nothing about the bronze medal skier, the world no, world class no. drone per, <laughs> racer. That's a beautiful voice. <laughs> anyway, all right. Thank you very much for stopping by, Jordan. Really appreciate it. Um, hey, enjoy hey, enjoy the race. Uh, well, no, if you uh, if you need anything, will do. All right. Enjoy. Have a good night, everybody. All right. Peace. <clears throat> Cool. What do you guys think about that? Did you like that? Uh, let me pull my comments back up here. <coughs> yeah, we're still going. All right, so while he was on the phone, I've got the uh, VTX installed. I'm going to go ahead and run my heat gun here in a second. So cover your ears. Need that as a hoodie. Yeah, here's 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 my Detroit multi rotor hoodie, actually, right here. <laughs> if it was cool in here, I would be wearing that. It lives in my office pretty much. Cool. All right, so VTX is installed, ready to go. Cameras installed. Everything's wired up to the FPV system. Smart audio should be ready. Um, <clears throat> then, uh, so we need a receiver. So I've got my receiver here, <coughs> which looks a little worse for the wear, but it's actually totally fine. Um, and I'm going to put it at the front with the camera here. And so it's just going to go in like this. So we're going to need a little double-sided tape. And then I'm not sure what I want to do with the antenna yet. <clears throat> like I almost want to have it. I want to have it vertical. That's for sure. Um, maybe like way out front here, like this. The uh, the idea would like the ideal would be to like put it up like this or something like that. But I don't have a great way to do that. Maybe if I did it like. No, but then it's risking, like, every time it lands will be, it needs to be like this almost. Well, let's burn that bridge when we come to it. Will you do the hover test live with us? 
at, at a certain point, I will say, if you guys want to see a hover test, we got to reach our, our goal of $100 donated across the stream. Oh, by the way, thank you, 15 bucks from uh, Pacific Northwest. I Jordan called right as we were, right as you did that. So thank you very much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. So I couldn't, couldn't do this stuff without you guys. So, um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to decide on, you know, how much risk I want to put into, uh, doing a hover, hover test. <laughs> Of course, I put it right over the button every single time. Like, I'm, like, conscious of it, too. I'm, like, thinking, like, okay, don't put it over the button. Don't put it over the button. And what do I do? Put it over the button. Okay. So that's on there. That's out of the way. And i got to run these wires all the way back to the back, which I already put these screws on, stupidly. Okay, that's fixed. Seven inch indoor hover test. Yeah, buddy. We think we are a chicken. Now we'll probably go down to the garage. Receiver wires are all back here. Oh my gosh, Todd. Thank you so much. That might just do it right there. I think, where does that put us? Like 80 bucks or so? <clears throat> do it in the shower. We'll have to do some beta flight stuff first. You could do way more than $100 damage in that room. That is a great point. I hadn't thought about it like that. You trying to get me to... You trying to talk me out of this? Is that what's going on? Hello. <clears throat> uh, sorry, I'm actually live streaming right now. Forgot that I was in Discord. Um, night train with 10 bucks thank you sir uh, let's see we're getting real close we'll have to do the beta flight config too so that might that'll take some extra time is all but we can certainly get that done This is also assuming that there won't be magic smoke when uh, we plug it in. <laughs> okay. Now we got to mount the antenna. Which I really want to do it like that. So that would be ideal. What if we just went out on the arm like that or something? Or 
out the nose. <laughs> Think, think, think. What do you guys think? Time to head out. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. What about like through here? It feels like going as far forward on the nose as we could go would be the best. Hmm. Maybe we should just do it like this and suffer the consequence. I mean, these are pretty rugged little buggers. Rugged bugger, cool band name called it. Yeah, out the back would be good. This is just where I want to have the receiver, you know. I mean, I could just do something like this. Which, you know, is risky of a prop strike, but it's, you know, it's a... It's a long range quad, it should never have prop strikes, you know. If it was way out front like that. Kind of dig that. Little whiskers. Let's try that. We can always change it later. It's an easy, easy fix. And again, it's like it's it'll. It's the only problem is if it crashes, right? And this is it's not really supposed to crash. As funny as that sounds. Oh shoot. Gotta take the camera off for a second. Ding. 
Whisker antennas. That looks pretty funny. Hello. I am a drone. Dead cat with whiskers. Yes! That's right. That's it. <laughs> All right. Who's ready for some magic? Some smoke. The catfish. The dead. The dead catfish. Sure. We'll just go six S straight away. <sighs> Here goes nothing. Oh, thank gosh. Money. Look at that LED and everything. Wow. Golly, those are bright. <laughs> Nothing from the receiver unless the LEDs are on the other side. Which I don't think they are. That's not good. Receiver, why? Plug into the five volt. Oh, that's annoying. Should put an antenna on here before I forget. It'll be fine. Hmm. That better not be a dead receiver. No, there's no way. I pulled it off of a working quad. <laughs> Unless the wire ordering is wrong. Oh, you know what it is. The wiring order is wrong. Is that right? Yellow is ground, black is 5 volt. That's what it is for some reason. Okay. Hopefully we didn't just kill this thing. Yellow to ground, black to 5 volt. The little plugs on the receivers are different than everything else in the universe. There we go. And it's bound. Oh, baby. Cool. Let's check video. Oh, I think I see it. What is your top choice for a reliable racing SC? Uh, the Hobbyling G2 stack. Honestly. Oh, yeah. Video works. Man, we're good at our ga this game. Cool. All right. Let's head over to the computer and get everything working.
One second. And game. Whoa. <laughs> That's exciting. <clears throat> okay, should see this now. Now we're going to go to minimize, 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 minimize. Beta flight. Plug in a quad cop pair. Effing audio man. Oh, here, let me bring this closer to me because this has got the mic. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go to dump. Omnibus F4SD 3.2.1. So we've got to update that. BL. I have not had a problem with these catching on fire. No. Firmware flasher. Release. Uh, Omnibus F4SD 5.3. Load. Flash. Okay. Well, that's flashing. I'll be right back. I need to grab more beer. And I'm back. Connect. Okay. Orientation is good. That's good. Ports. Okay. So you are one is the camera control. <clears throat> Oops. And UART 3 is our receiver, and UART 4 is the smart audio. <clears throat> Configuration, we're going to run reverse props, 8K, 8K, don't need any of these. Look, is the craft name, going to serial based, crossfire, air mode, turn on beacon, we're going to run dshot 1200 at 3.5, sure, so we're going to have big props on there, save. Now, PID tuning, leave them normal for now, except we'll set our feed forward at 150, 0.8, 0.3, 150, 0.3, yaw, 5, 100, 0, 150, 0.8, 0.83, throttle boost at 50 ish. I term relax RP no smart feed forward anti gravity seven no seven yeah is that right yeah TPA or on two save this is all just random sorry <clears throat> uh, receiver we're gonna be on A E T R leave all of this alone. And plug it in.
Turn on the radio. Good to go. Cool. <clears throat> Modes, arm is channel one. Beeper is channel two. Flip over after crash or turtle mode is channel three. Don't need anything else. Motors. I understand. Okay. One is backwards. Two is good. Three is good. Four is backwards. Feel Holly 32. Connect. Check. Dink, 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 dink. Cool. Go to two. Reverse. Right. Okay. Four. No. No, 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 no. Two was good. Two. Normal. Right. One. Reverse. Right. Four. Reverse. Right. Okay, so now all motor directions should be the same. You're being stream bombed on Botsy stream again? <clears throat> uh, let's see. Motors. Ding, ding. Okay, one is good. Two is good. Three is good. Four is good. Okay, cool. All motor directions are working. BTX is working, receiver is working, modes are set. That is a hover test, if I ever heard one. Um, so let's button the top up right now. I'm going to go to my OBS and switch over to Zillow Bench. Yoink. <clears throat> Bring my phone over here with me. My favorite part is putting the top plate on. I'm just seeing everything just kind of button up finally. Hey, you're on bots live stream. Wait, like I'm on it on it? Is he just watching? Hold on. <clears throat> let's let's watch a stream. Watch a stream. Mm. Twenty to me. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> We're like. Uh, I was gonna build you something. Stream with, uh, inception. Oh wait, here. Let's leave. get. I want to be closer to Paul. Let's get over here. <laughs> I've got. Uh, I've got. I've got a bunch of those frames coming in that I showed <laughs> He you. just like put himself over top of me. Oh. Those, <laughs> those secret custom frames. Yes. Uh, yeah, dude, uh, those are nice. Let me see if I can add, uh, get a load of that. I'm trying to uh, get a deal on some motors to, to get like 20 motors. But can't really find a, a good deal. Is he just watching? Wait, he's talking about us. Look, he's going to go see it. We have to wave to him so he can see us. Everybody say hi, Paul. <laughs> You're finally waving. It's been, hi, it's been, a, it's been a weirdly long audience. time. It's just uncomfortable. Oh, wait, he's going to do the stream on the stream. There. No, don't do that. That's too much. That's too much stuff. Okay, <laughs> when he goes so on to it, be sure to wave to him when he goes on to it. Yep. Everybody wave. Hey, Paul. Hi, Paul. We're, it's so much. There's so much going on. <laughs> Yeah, I've tried so meta, and there's so many things build on, a quad so echoey. and uh, freaking me out, bro. Guest on a stream. Oh, and all that talk, at the same talking about giving me free stuff again. <laughs> Everybody, pause your stuff. This is too much. Hi, Nurk. How are you? I am doing great. This is how long the delay is, and I think it's going to be really uncomfortable. Stream. I don't know what's going on. I think oh, he's, he's trying to. Here. He's not. He's watching us. Yeah. We all the way to him. Hi, Paul. We're finally waiting. Fucking stream is going on. Let me know when you want to switch out of this. Oh, 
it was a bit. I think it's kind of funny. Do you think that they want to see the the hover test? I like that. I like that. Like you're basically sponsor bombing. This is so confusing. Okay. So there's the whole quad. <laughs> May I say I finally made it onto one of the Nerd streams. I've actually figured I've wanted to do that for a while. There's you no can way come onto one of the Nerd streams out, anytime you want. You just gotta hit me up. Appreciate it. I anytime it you want. By just being a dirt bag. <laughs> let's um and in celebration of that, let's give something away. I'm gonna leave Paul to let him do his thing, and I'm not right. the poor man anymore. Thanks, Paul. Right. See ya. Bing. Thank you for playing, Paul. You're the best. All right. <laughs> let's give away a prize because right. your boy right. finally made it onto now. Sorry. a Nerk live stream. I feel like he doesn't have guests or anything that often, so all of you got to experience that with me. Congratulations to so, yeah, yeah, so all of us. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> I need to get a soundboard, but let's um, give away five sets of propellers. How about that? Five sets of juicy, fresh propellers, courtesy of Quadbox. <laughs> now I'm not going to be able to get this back together in, in working order. Dang it, Pot. Why oh, you got to sabotage everything? <laughs> Change to... USB camera. Come on. Work, darn it. That's the right one there. Now this one needs to be this one. Hello. Man, we've been sabotaged. There we go. Okay, got it. <laughs> Jeez. Freaking bot. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Uh, let's be honest. So I'm trying to find a battery strap. Okay, we'll use this one. Oh, wait, no. Uh, no, I'm going to just strap it straight. He has no content, so he's streaming dark. Savage. Okay, so like I was saying about the battery strap method here, which is something that I figured out on my other one, is it just goes around and through like this. So that keeps it up out of the props, and then this one just wraps in and plugs in like that. Nice and simple. Okay, I'm confident enough to fly that inside. <clears throat> Maybe. Pretty battery. Yeah, I know. I got a lot of, a lot of rough stuff. Okay, so now, do I have to fly this inside on six-inch props, or can I just put five-inch on there so that I'm so that I can chicken out a little bit? Is that okay? Please. I mean, you guys paid for it, so you gotta let me know if I have to go six-inch or not. Ugh, I really don't want to, but I'll do what you need. I will do what you ask. Fly three inch. No balls. <laughs> okay, the battery's not that bad. It's just the skin came off, okay? See? Okay, 
Five inch it is. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> Azure props, best props for you. Fly it like you want it and what you feel safe with. I f well, I feel safe with anything. <laughs> I mean, what's the worst that would happen? I get cut and bleed out on stream? I mean, if that doesn't get me subs, I don't know what will. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, the ambulance coming here? <laughs> I'm just, like, bleeding on the floor. Like, you guys are, like, calling the cops for me. Honestly, I'd pay good money for that. <laughs> okay, where, where's all the plant nuts? How, how do they disappear? I, don't, I literally don't... I'm just going to steal them from this squad, because this squad is clearly not in the best shape right now. I'll upload footage tomorrow to uh, Facebook of flying uh, six inch so that you can see it. Fly it like I stole it? Wait, wouldn't that just be like MIA? Like I wouldn't be able to see it anymore? These five inch props look hilarious on this thing. <laughs> I like that people are still chiming in on what size props to fly. Keep ripping. Pacific! Thank you. Jumping in again. Six. Damn it, Jim. <laughs> I'm a doctor, not a professional drone pilot. I love the whiskers! Okay, I'm falling in love with the whiskers. That's never changing. I don't care. Okay. Point this so you can see the floor here. Just to get everything hunky dory. Where to put this? Okay, so like just so you know, like this is how much room we're working with. Like that's one step. I mean I'm a tall guy. That's one step. One, two, and that's my butt. <laughs> so that's what we're working with here are you guys sure that you want this oh gosh props all good yep okay i'll just be uh over here in the corner No, you guys can't even see that. Just kidding. There. more aggressive than it really was. Dude! We built a flying machine. It looks pretty gnarly in the air, honestly. Anybody else see the flip? Watch them shins. <laughs> Yeah, these are, I mean, these are 5140 props, so they're, and it's also 6S on 1900 KV, so it's a little bit overkill. I'll probably be running this on 5 cell mostly. Would 90 degree elbow help keep the VTX safer? Probably. Yeah, I, th I think that would be true. 
Ugh. There, I'll get that battery out of your way so you don't have to look at it anymore. Because apparently it's such a big deal. Oh, that sounded like a... I don't know. Oh yeah, so let's look at this GoPro mount. I'm curious. Where is my GoPro? Oop, not in there. Oh, it's here. Okay. Boink. Okay, now we need some straps. Need to strap it on. Need those skinny ones, though. The ones that I never have when I need them. Of course. Oh, here's one. Two. Look at that. I'm totally prepared. <laughs> wonder if I should have done this first. Need to go on this way. Take it off. Was that the first hover test on live stream ever? No. I do it I do it pretty much on every stream. So I don't typically like these couch designs for GoPro mounts. I think that they leave the GoPro a little bit too exposed. Um, but again, this is also, you know, a long distance quad. So like, hopefully it's not crashing a ton. And then the GoPro, you know, isn't risking much because it won't ever be hitting the ground, hopefully. Um, I will probably eventually just take one of my green gordo ones and use it for this because it can you can kind of jerry rig it to fit hope this one's long enough to think about that i think i've seen you hover in half of the rooms in your house yeah you probably you really have though oh yeah this one's not long enough Dang. Do I have anything longer? Uh, what size do I even need? Oh, my legs! You ever like bend over after you've been standing for a long time and it just is like, oh, hello, knees? That's what it feels like to use you. Better battery straps. I don't think those are any longer. Huh. Okay, well, I guess we'll just leave it like this. I mean, that's fine, obviously.
minute at 45 every time I bend my knees is like that. <laughs> oh, sorry, I shouldn't be laughing. So yeah, that's the, the Umagad sticky stiff. So Jordan was saying that you pretty much have to have the battery all the way back. Here's a fresher one for you A-holes. Didn't quite cut away enough of that. Uh, Gabby is going to be racing IMSA this year instead of IndyCar. And yeah, he does. He, he runs. Uh, Telema42 is right. He does run IndyCar. Not Formula One. <clears throat> he wishes it was Formula One. God, I hope he watches this. <laughs> Don't need that second piece. Whoa, that's actually way too back heavy. <laughs> that's funny. I didn't think that was going to be the problem. Trying to go for like somewhere halfway between the props. Mm. Yeah, it might be further back like that actually. Because I was I, the first time I was holding it like dead center of the flight controller, which is not the center of gravity on this. The center of gravity is somewhere halfway between the props or so. You were at the... F oh, yeah, you were at the... F okay, cool. Yeah, I was really glad to have seen him at the 500 as well. Cool. Well, that there's a drone. A really, really wide drone. 
You said CG was bolts for the front arms? No, there's no way. It's bolts for the. It's got to be bolts for the back arms, because CG with for the front arms would be like. Shoot. CG like front arms would be like way up here. There's no way that that would be the center of gravity. The center of gravity should be like back here. It should be halfway between the props. And the props, halfway between the props is not up front. It's in the middle, in the back, kind of. So it should be, I, I would say that's pretty close, if not back heavy. But yeah, I want to put some 6-inch props on here and just see what it looks like, because I think it's going to look gnarly. Well, no, I'm going to fly some 5 I'm going to fly some 5 inch tomorrow because I need to get some of the right size 5S batteries. Cool. Well, I think that will do it for tonight. Um, oh, Kara, come here. Come say hi. No. <laughs> come here. Come here. Oh, this good. Oh, this a good girl. Look at her little limp. It's so pathetic. Come here. Come here. No, come. Can you say hi. What's this? What's this right here? No, you're silly. There you go. What's that? No good sit. <laughs> but yeah, she's got a little boo boo. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much uh, for stopping by. Let's not make that a shot of my crotch. Here, look at the, the drone. Uh, this has been, I guess, the FPV live stream. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but yeah, so I hope that you guys learned something tonight. We got a chance to talk to Jet, the world champion, uh, the two-time. Uh, we had a chance to check out his frame, the... Uh, the Super G. This is the Dead Cat long range version. I'm gonna be. Uh, I'll I'll post some video. I'm sure tomorrow on Facebook, uh, on my uh, Facebook.com/slash/NerkFPV. Um, if you want to see what uh, how this how this turns out in terms of its flying characteristics and uh, all that. But um, in the meantime, thanks for coming by. Thanks for checking it out and stay flying. <laughs>